Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video of me reacting to all things Scandinavia. And in today's video, I am finally making my way to Denmark. Yes, this video is going to be about Denmark. And as you can see from the title of the video, this is going to be me reacting to Geography Now, Denmark. So I'm thinking this is going to give me some really good basic understanding of Denmark as a country. Um, and I'm really excited for it. I've never been to Denmark yet. It's definitely on my list of places to go to. So I'm very excited. So let's just do this. This is Geography Now in Denmark. Let's go. Remember in the Angola episode, I mentioned how I went to Denmark one time and bought a sandwich that was $21? Well, this was that sandwich and my reaction was like, $21? Oh, this better be the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. You got lucky. It's a very expensive sandwich. So you would think for that price, it would be a tasty sandwich. But uh, that price doesn't surprise me. Anything in Scandinavia is more expensive than in other places of the world. So nothing new there so far. It's time to learn geography now. Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie. Legos, Vikings, and Roll Gold Mathol. We got a lot to cover, so let's jump in. Ah, Denmark, the link between the rest of Europe and Scandinavia. So much to discuss. Denmark is classified as a Nordic country, hence located in the Northern European region, even though it's kind of like the southernmost state in the Nordics. Full disclaimer, ignore Wikipedia. I'm gonna pronounce the location names in their proper Danish context. So here we go. Denmark is made of the Juland, not Jutland, peninsula that connects to Germany in the south, as well as 1,419 islands of those only 400. Okay, yeah, so I would, I would say so far, like I would probably know the English way of saying these regions and places but not the original danish so the, i'm going to be learning something uh, in this video so that's good that's always good 43 are named and 74 are inhabited with the largest island being um. shelland not zealand which is not to be confused with dutch zeeland which is not to be confused with new zealand although they did get their I name i can't take it that's too much information it is connected to fun island not Finn Island by the Great Belt Bridge completed in 1998. The country is divided into nice. five regions, the capital being Copenhagen, located on Schellen. Copenhagen is home to a myriad of historical sites, palaces, statues, residential units that are all the same height and style, with pockets of colorful, quaint, cozy shops and cafes, and dangerous bicycle lanes that you are not supposed to walk on. Now this word- I mean, Scan um, Copenhagen looks amazing. Uh, it's the only Scandinavian capital city that I haven't been to so far, but it's definitely on my list. And yeah, it just looks really cute. And I don't know, I just really want to go so bad. I don't know how I haven't been yet, but next year, I think it's going to be the first new country that I go to. So I'm very excited about that. Things are going to get a little spiced up. And by spiced up, I mean freezing cold and covered in whale blubber. Denmark, for those of you who didn't know, is a kingdom, one of the last surviving ones in Europe, and is currently under the headship yep. of chain-smoking Queen Margaret II. These still fall under Danish sovereignty and make up the massive Greenland Island and the Little Faroe Islands. Both of these places are radically different from mainland... It's crazy that somewhere that's quite small, uh, geographically, like Denmark, owns Greenland, which is so big. I know there's probably not much on there, um, but... Yeah, it's still impressive how big Greenland is. And obviously the Faroe Islands as well. I definitely want to go there. And I would like to learn more about the Faroe Islands for sure. Denmark. For one, Greenland is primarily inhabited by native Inuit tribal peoples that live on the island right. and is 80% covered in ice year round. The Faroe Islands are a conglomeration of 20-ish mystical cloudy windy islands that have this crazy looking lake that looks like it's about to spill over the cliffs into wow. the ocean. These two areas have their own self-governing home rule, otherwise only depending on Denmark for military, justice, currency, and foreign affairs. Otherwise, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, historically, they did try to kind of create an empire by colonizing parts of the Caribbean, Ghana, India, and then in the Nickel Bar islands in the Indian Ocean, but they kind of ran out of money and ended up selling everything to other countries. Too bad. It would be awesome to see people in the Indian Ocean speaking Danish. Nonetheless, mainland Denmark is kind of like a fast-moving economic machine. Let's talk about how. Now, when it comes to land makeup, Denmark is pretty flat. I mean, the highest point, Mullehoy, is only about 170 meters tall, and it looks like this. Otherwise, only about 13% of the country is forested, including the tree plantations, and the rest is pretty much used for agriculture that can produce enough food to feed about 15 million people. It's about three times the size of their entire population. Good for you. I mean, I feel like it's a flat place, a flat country, but I do believe that it's a very beautiful place with lots of great nature and landscapes and countrysides. And yeah, I still think it has a lot of beauty to it. 
You, Denmark. But one thing Denmark is actually famous for growing is non-produce plants like grass, fodder, and Christmas trees. The highly sought after Danish Nordman mm. fir has been classified as the Rolls Royce of Christmas trees. And every year investors from Germany, the Netherlands, and even the UK jump in at the end of November and grab whatever they can before it's gone. Now, one thing you need to know is that like many I other areas that. in the Nordic region, Denmark's weather can be quite dreary. First of all, Denmark yeah. is the only Nordic country that doesn't really get a lot of snow. Denmark is kind of like the mud pit located below the jet stream blocked by Norway and the UK. This means that even though it gets really cold, pressure systems rarely cause snow. This is also pretty much why everybody dresses like a J. Crew fall fashion line model on the streets. If you're going to get <laughs> wet and freezing, you may as well look good while doing it. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, pretty much the rest of True. Denmark is just rolling green plains with sandy beaches and quirky little islands that people like to hop over for camping trips in the summer. If we were going to talk about Greenland and the Faroe Islands, we would get a radically different story of mind-boggling, captivating cliffs, bluffs, sea stacks, mm -hmm. glaciers, fissures, icebergs, and mountains. If you don't know what a Mulan is, it's not this, but this. <laughs> this Mulan is large enough to swallow a school bus. Oh, wow. But we'll have to save that for another video. They'll come out in 9,374 years. In the meantime, let's talk about the people. <laughs> Now this is gonna get really fun. Denmark's people are really unique in their cultural, historical, and postmodern upbringing. First of all, the country has about 5.7 million people and is one of the highest taxed countries in the world. About 89% of- Yeah, just like Norway and uh, Sweden, you're gonna pay a lot of taxes in Denmark, I'm, I'm sure. So, yeah. But again, like I said about Sweden and Norway in past videos, I guess, the Danish people see it as an investment and they probably get a lot back just like in Sweden and Norway. I assume, I don't know, but uh, maybe you can tell me in the comments below. The country identifies as ethnically Danish. About 11% are others. Wow. Some of the largest groups in the other category being the Polish, Germans, Turkish, Romanians, Iraqis, and Afghans. Now, when it comes to Danish culture, there's a lot behind it, but in a nutshell, Vikings. Vikings pretty much had their start in what is now present-day Denmark and whom pretty much dominated all of the Nordic regions as far as New mm -hmm. Finland in Canada to Estonia. Which is why most of the Nordic states and regions can pretty much understand each other when they talk. Danes, Swedes, Norwegians, and Icelanders can generally understand each other as they have the same basic linguistic structure. Sure, there are subtle discrepancies, but overall they can kind of get by conversationally. <laughs> Granted, there's a saying, the Norwegian and Swedish languages sound like dancing fairies, whereas the Danish language sounds like a dude with a potato in his mouth. By the way, anybody who wants to learn Danish- Oh my god, that is so true. I'd never thought about that before, but yeah, I have thought previously that the Norwegian and Swedish language is quite musical and it's quite like light, but the Danish language is, is a bit different. It's a bit, I don't know how to describe it, but it's not quite the same. Danish, full disclosure, it's gonna suck. The J makes the Y sound, the Y makes the U sound, the V makes a W sound, the R makes a R sound, the H is silent half the time. A ton of the letters are never even used and don't even get started on A, U, and O. I kind of discovered a little trick though when I went to Denmark. When speaking Danish, all you really have to do is kind of like pronounce the first part of the word that you think makes a sound and then just kind of like give up on the rest of the word. For example, <laughs> Kuppenhen, Nubrogen, Lufstrein. I'm literally just listing names of places in Copenhagen that I've been to. I'm going to have to try that when I'm in Denmark, see if it works. Uh, I mean, it would be much easier for me, but yeah, I'm, I don't know if it works 100%, but you got to give it a try. Honestly, though, you really won't have much of a problem getting around if you speak English. Over 80% of the entire country, mostly the younger generation, speaks proficient English to the point where they don't even need subtitles when watching American TV shows and movies. Also, keep in mind, Greenland has its own language that is complete. Yeah, I do find that the Norwegians, the Swedish and the Danish are very, very good at English. Um, a lot of people speak it very well, especially, like they said, the younger people, but I do think there is older people as well. So it's good for me going to these countries, but also it's not if I want to go to Norway or Sweden or Denmark and practice those languages. I feel like once people know your English, they just want to talk to you in English. At least that's what I found in other countries. So yeah, it's not so, it's good for me, but it's also not good for me. So yeah unintelligible as it's an Inuit language closer to the indigenous Inuktitut and Yupik languages found in Canada and Alaska. And Faroese is pretty hard for most Danish people to grasp as it actually has more words rooted in the ancient Norse mm. language and it's actually more intelligible to Icelandic. Back to culture though, Denmark has definitely left its mark, mm. whether it's notable figures like author Hans Christian Andersen, philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, or whether... That's actually how you pronounce his name. Wow. It's not Soren Kierkegaard. It's 
or whether it be the invention of the loudspeaker or Legos or their love of handball, their impeccable yeah. architecture, love of cuisine. Noma in Copenhagen, by the way, being voted the best restaurant in the world with plates that feature live ants and moss. If you're really awesome. gonna get a feel for Danish culture though, you kind of have to know about Janteloten and Hygge. The funny thing is, Danes are kind of brought up in a social mindset that is kind of integrated into their subconscious known as Janteloten, which kind of translates to something like, you are not better than the crowd, which I know sounds kind of depressing, but it's really trying to instill a sense of equality and communal cooperation. Hygge translates to something like spend good times with friends and family. And I've heard like of this. A cozy thing. Of course, Denmark is known for being ranked one of the happiest overall countries, even though they are also kind of one of the highest ranked consumers of antidepressants as well. But hey, they still pull off everyday life looking oh so good, even if it's during one of those really loud annual emergency drills. Okay, Christine, explain what's happening right now. Denmark is testing the sirens for uh, <laughs> warfare. Yeah, when we're being attacked by the Germans again. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I can imagine that maybe that gets really annoying. I don't know if you're Danish and you have to deal with those sirens, you know. Uh, does it get annoying? I feel like it would for me, but I don't know. I'm really, really scared right now. Let's run to the security basement. <laughs> the Germans are coming. Speaking of Germans. Now, we all know that one person we're all kind of jealous of because they're kind of rich, well-adjusted, and have a ton of friends, and they're like kind of good-looking. Well, that's Norway. Denmark is a little bit rockier. No, but seriously, for such a small nation, Denmark has a huge entourage of friends, and it's almost kind of hard for anyone in the world to dismiss them at a party. As a founding member of the EU and NATO, Denmark has had roots planted in diplomacy for decades. First off, Denmark generally gets along with Germany. Business between the Germans is a hugely integral part of their economy, and Denmark acts like the gateway to scan Scandinavia for them and the rest of Europe. The US and the UK are incredibly close as both tangible and cultural imports have been established for centuries. For a while, the Danes even took over parts of the UK, which is why to this day, the English language still retains hundreds of old Norse derived words like leg, dog, and window. The closest friends though would have to be the Nordic countries. I had absolutely no idea those were Danish words. So you learn something new every day. Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. These four are without a doubt Denmark's closest friends, even though Sweden and them have kind of had more wars and battles historically than any other two states in the world. They've moved on and grown up. <laughs> Out of the Nordic countries, though, Norway would probably be considered their best friends. Danes are obsessed with Norwegians and often consider Norway the girlfriend they took away from Sweden. In conclusion, Denmark is the rich, <laughs> rainy rascal that always seems to show up on time for every party, but somehow gets all his work done in an organized, efficient manner. Stay tuned, Djibouti is coming up next okay guys so that was me reacting to geography now denmark it was a super interesting video there were quite a few things in there that i didn't know before there were some things in there that i did know um very very interesting i feel like it was a very basic introduction to denmark as a whole so like if you didn't know anything about denmark this video would be a very good place to start to have an idea about what Denmark is like. Obviously I have read some things about Denmark in the past, so not a lot in this video was new and surprising, but there were some bits in there that were. So I'm very excited to learn more about Denmark. I know I've done a lot of videos on this channel which have been about Norway and Sweden, but I'm not gonna forget about Denmark. This channel is about Scandinavia as a whole, so I'm definitely gonna be doing more videos about Denmark, but yeah. Uh, it was a cool video and I found it super interesting and I really can't wait to go to Denmark. I do want to go to Copenhagen first because I just feel like that is a must. But eventually, like with Norway and Sweden, I do want to visit more places in Denmark. So I'm excited about doing that. If you did like this video, please give it a like, thumbs up, maybe comment in the section below. Let me know your thoughts about Denmark. If you've been to Denmark, tell me all the things you liked about it. If you haven't been to Denmark, but you want to go, tell me why you want to go. Um, yeah, the Danish people seem really cool and I'm excited to learn more and keep on reacting to videos. So yeah, hopefully you did like this video. Hopefully you want to subscribe to see more videos of me uh, learning things about Scandinavia because that's what I'm kind of interested in doing right now. I'm doing a lot of videos about Norway, Sweden and Denmark and I just can't wait to learn more and also to go back to these countries. Well, to go back to Norway and Sweden, also go to Denmark for the first time. So hopefully I will see you guys back here again watching another one of my videos in the future. And until next time, guys, stay safe and I'll see you soon.